All right, good morning. good morning. This is the time of the morning we talk about Bible prophecy, we reserve some time to look at trends in the world that might corroborate some of the unfulfilled prophecies that we read in Scripture. We are considered futurists. Uh, that's a technical term that means that any of the unfulfilled future prophecies we believe will be literally fulfilled just like all the Old Testament prophetic prophecies were. They're not allegories or stories, they're, they're literal. And so um, we take that uh, straight from the Bible. You know, Daniel, when he read prophecy, he thought it was really going to happen. He was reading in Jeremiah about uh, the 70 weeks and uh, he started getting ready for that period of time. We like to use reliable sources for our news. There's a lot of junk out there. I don't know if you've noticed that, but Yesterday I realized everything on the internet is not true, uh, but uh, it was really a down feeling. But anyway, uh, tons of sensationalism with prophecy because, uh, well, never mind that. It just we want to stick to what's you know really happening. It's sensational enough. Uh, you don't need to make stuff up. And we're not saying the things we report are the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Only that they're what you would expect from reading the Bible. So. One thing is clear from reading the Revelation, the last book of the Bible, the government of the future Great Tribulation will be totalitarian. The world leader we commonly call the Antichrist will utilize a surveillance society in which no one will be able to transact any business without having a personal identifier connected to a global system of commerce. Once that happens, human rights and freedoms will be a thing of the past. The government will dictate everything about a person's life. I know, it sounds as if we're the whacked out conspiracy theorists, but we're not. The control we're suggesting is what many in the world leadership are openly advocating. World Economic Forum, for, exact, uh, for example. They're using the need to address climate change as an overriding global problem that overshadows any loss of personal freedoms. Now, disclaimer, although I'm using climate change as an example, we're not talking about climate change Believe whatever you want about climate change, okay? People are all over the map, uh, and that's fine. Uh, we're talking about how this is an, a doorway to these people taking control. Uh, on a kind of a comical basis, we have what I'm calling thermostat wars. An article posted last week was titled, Switzerland might jail anyone who heats rooms above 66 degrees. Excerpts read like this, this is real. Switzerland is considering putting anyone who heats their rooms above 66 degrees in jail for up to three years. It would only happen if Switzerland is forced to ration gas because of the Russia-Ukraine war. Fines could also be handed out for violators. A spokesman for the Federal Department of Finance said the rate for fines would be about $30 a day, uh, up to a maximum of $3,000, but uh, obviously you can go to jail as well. Closer to home, this title, Colorado Utility Company locks 22,000 thermostats in 90 degree weather due to an energy emergency. Thousands of utility company customers in Colorado were locked out of their uh, thermostats due to an energy emergency, sparking outrage that spilled onto social media. It's kind of hard to feel sorry for them at 90 degrees, right? Some of you don't even turn on your air conditioner until it's 99, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, an XL Energy customer in Arvada, Colorado told the news, he attempted to turn up the air conditioner as temperatures creeped into the 90s. Uh, not, not even 99, I mean into the 90s. It, we're talking 88 here, this is, uh, you know. Anyway, on Tuesday, but he was greeted with a message from this thermostat declaring an energy emergency and prevented from turning the dial. I'm sorry I can't turn the dial, Hal, but anyway. In all fairness, those affected had signed up for the program and received a monetary credit on their bills. So American, right? They offer you credit? Sure. Just don't ever turn my air conditioning off like you said you might. But uh, anyway, so that's thermostat just acted on its own. Uh, latest smart thermostats that you may be buying at the store feature on-demand response and they can reduce energy use at peak times of consumption, pricing, and carbon emissions. That means they work on their own to keep your air conditioning off. Spain has set strict limits on air conditioning in shops and other venues, requiring business and various buildings to keep their thermostats uh, to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, despite the fact that the country is enduring a heat wave. In addition to cutting back on air conditioning, this is my favorite, Spain has proposed ministers, public officials, and private sector employees stop wearing neckties during hot summer months. T 
to keep cool. Now here's something less comical. The United Nations Human Rights Council says, climate change is an urgent global problem requiring a global solution. The Council called for international cooperation to implement the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in order to support national efforts for the realization of human rights affected by climate change related impact. Now, if you just read that, it sounds pretty good, like the UN is in favor of uh, balancing out human rights, but that's not what they mean by human rights. Uh, for example, concerning what they call the right to life, they say in order to uphold a right to life, states, nations must take effective measures to mitigate and adapt to climate change and prevent foreseeable loss of life. In other words, nations who aren't on board with climate change need to get on board because it's costing people's lives in less fortunate countries. Uh, because they see climate change as the number one priority around the world, you are violating someone else's right to life if you do not submit to a global authority that decides how you live. And so what I'm talking about here, again, not climate change per se, but the move towards loss of, of, of national sovereignty is really what they're talking about. And they're openly advocating giving up the government to a global group of individuals uh, who will make all of the decisions and, and, and they're uh, using climate change as, as the vehicle because people say, well, we have, to, we have to save the planet, so whatever we have to do, I guess we have to do. Um, but what's, it's just a move towards global government. And a rapid move towards global government, which maybe even 10 years ago you would think, well, that's never going to happen, now it's happening. It's right out of the book of the Revelation because that's the government that's going to exist in the Revelation. And right now they're arguing, while all these things are happening, they're having arguments about the you know, human rights and freedoms and stuff, but they don't care because we have to save the planet. And, and again, whether you're on, whatever side of that you're on, that's fine, but the real issue here is loss of sovereignty uh, and the rapid movement towards that. We're witnessing stage setting for the seven year great tribulation described in the last book of the Bible. However, we won't be here on earth for that, not the church, because Jesus said he was coming to raise the dead in Christ and then he would rapture living believers and take us all to heaven. He promised that the church would not be subject to the wrath to come upon the whole earth, but we will come back with him after that time uh, in his second coming. And so the question we ask is this, are you ready for the rapture? If not, get ready, stay ready, keep looking up because, ready or not, Jesus is coming.